Talking Nighthawk Gold today, I've got the president and CEO, Michael Byron. Nighthawk trades in the Toronto Venture Exchange as NHK. Hey, Mike, I appreciate you spending some time with me, and I, I want to run through current day activities with Treasure Island and Colomac, but uh, I think in the interest of uh, getting our investors a little more educated on the NHK story, why don't you peel back and, and talk about you know where this thing came from and, and, uh, and what the investment thesis is. I know you've been a very experienced guy. You put this thing together in, in 08, I believe, so uh, kind of run through that if you don't mind. Sure. Well, thanks, Rob. Uh, it'll be my pleasure. Um, yeah, Nighthawk is a story that originated uh, looking at a, a particular Archean greenstone belt in northern Canada that had all the, the sort of characteristics of our traditional Archean gold camps, you know, similar to Red Lake, you know, on this side of the border, Red Lake and the Timmins Camp and the Kirkland Larder Lake area. And by that, I mean, it's the same age of rock, same rock type, same style of mineralization and age of mineralization, yada, yada, yada. So you're looking at an area that hasn't had the exploration activity as these, his, you know, historical mining camps, um, but all the potential upside. So what I saw back in, as you alluded to, early 2008, 2008, 2009, was there was no shortage of mineralization in this belt. And that, I mean, in terms of higher grade gold and good mineralized widths, which is what you typically what you look for. And also there was this former producer sitting in the middle that uh, not a lot of people uh, knew much about. So it, it became a land grab of of sorts so that we could acquire the entire belt, the entire gold belt, um, for a very modest price and began the process of just unraveling some of the opportunity that we, that we see there. Yeah, let's uh, talk about that opportunity. Uh, you've got two projects you're working on pretty hard here. Let's uh, dig into uh, Colomac and Treasure Island. Certainly. Well, a coal Mac, um, that's our flagship asset, as you know, and, and uh, it sort of carries the ball for us up there because it does have a resource, a 43101 resource that's actively growing. And we're also expanding it from what it was traditionally known when it had its former production uh, days. Um, it was a large tonnage, low grade deposit, but we've found high grade opportunities and began to build on that theme moving forward. And, and obviously the reason for that is, is we didn't want to just go back to Colmac and sort of reinvent the wheel in a better gold climate. It was also an opportunity to, um, to discover new opportunities within the deposit. So instead of being just a, a large, you know, an open pit, we now feel that there's a strong probability that it can be exploited as an open pit, as well as a ramp driven underground opportunity into the high grade areas and I'll just give you a couple examples of what I mean by the higher grade corridors. In, in 2014, we discovered zone 1.5, and uh, the, the, the first hole into it cut 52.5 meters to 7.78 grams so, uh, with a 30 meter true width. So that wasn't sort of typical Colmax style mineralization by, by any stretch of the imagination. So it became, you know, the next step was to, to see if these were distinct domains, and this was, we drilled it out over the ensuing years, it now stands about 300 meters in strike length, uh, 30 to 50 meters in true width, and, and starts from surface and extends it down to 650 meters where it, it's still open. Um, earlier this year, we put out our first uh, release on May 28th and, and just did a, uh, a bit of a step out hole into a gap where there was no drilling in, in, the, in this relatively shallow, about 250 meters deep and cut uh, you know, the, the best intersection ever recorded to date at Colmac, about, uh, it was 56 meters of 13.49 grams. So all, roughly twice the, the, the grade of that initial discovery hole. So there's there's certainly something at play at Colmac that, that is quite exciting and intriguing. And, and these are the sorts of targets that we're looking for. Um, we're not saying we're going to, you know, reinvent Colmac as a high-grade deposit, but it certainly has these high-grade corridors that give us another opportunity uh, that didn't exist in the past about exploiting it. Sure, let's uh, let's dig into to the uh, Treasure Island. You got some uh, some good intercepts there. Why don't you run through that real quick? Yeah, Treasure Island is another really interesting area because in this camp, uh, and it's similar to every other Archean camp, it has these big, long mineralized features or fault corridors, and Treasure Island's one of them. It, it uh, runs. It sits within this. We call it the Treasure Island Lori Lake corridor that spans about seven kilometers roughly east-west at the top of our land position. And um, it's about a 200-meter wide 
uh, alteration envelope. So, uh, and it's mineralized. And, and that really intrigued me when we first drilled that in, in 2011, because, you know, that's a big, big corridor and maybe hidden somewhere within that sort of broad domain, there could be discrete higher grade mineralization. So uh, that's what we, we embarked on in, in, uh, in 2018. And, and we had some, you know, pretty in, intriguing intercepts. I mean, you know, 18 and a half meters is 7.37 grams and 21.75 meters is 6.23 grams. So clearly we were onto something up there as well. It's all shallow and, and pretty much wide open for discovery. So we did this year, we did about, you know, roughly 5,000 meters into Treasure Island and we've only put two holes out so far. So we'll have a, a lot more news flow on Treasure Island in the incoming, uh, you know, in, next few months and uh, we hope to uh, demonstrate that there's a lot more opportunity up there as well. Sure let's uh, let's talk about uh, the future a little bit here you've got a, a pretty good gold market I think the conditions suggest that uh, lower interest rates uh, we should have uh, gold probably set up pretty nice here. How does that make you feel moving forward and what are the plans here for the fall? Well it certainly is um uh, you know, a shot of, of encouragement, obviously, being a junior explorer and dependent upon the markets to to continue uh, raising money and, and uh, allowing us to actively explore our land package. Um, so as long as that market stays strong and the interest is there, I think we have the, the right vehicle to tap into some of that opportunity. And, uh, you know, we are fully funded, so we're not, you know, going out to the market looking for money now. We, we have enough uh, money in the treasury to have roughly 14 15 million dollars left at the, after the end of this program so we are positioned to do a similar scale of program next year um, but like we said having said that we are junior explorer and, and uh, if things uh, present themselves you know we're we're an opportunistic group of people we'll we'll, we'll take a look at, at things but it's not our intention to raise money at this stage right now well, sounds like things are, are pretty teed up for you, so we'll look forward to getting some of those drill results out there. So anything else you'd like to impart to investors here, Mike? Uh, why, why Nighthawk? What makes this opportunity different from all the rest, these sea of juniors that are, you know, all, all claiming a lot of the same things, you know? Uh, um, what, what stands out with you guys? Well, I think just the, the caliber of asset that we have in a, in a strong jurisdiction, we own everything 100%. There's no... There's no royalties on, on our asset, uh, Colmac. Um, we can, uh, you know, it's like 900 square kilometers is our land package. We own not roughly 95% of the gold belt. No one else is in there. Um, so in terms of, of, of an opportunity, we hold that ground for about $100,000 U.S. a year. So there's no option payments, no, no uh, work commitments, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's a really simplistic and strong ownership on an asset that's continuing to grow. And uh, I think if people want exposure to the upside of gold in a, in, in a climate when there's not a lot of, of, of sort of good assets on the shelves anymore, and, and, and certainly due to the devastation in the exploration industry over the past 20 years, it's not like there's a, a tremendous amount of new things coming up. So it, it's, I think it resonates with the, uh, with the industry who are always looking for the next sort of deposits to to backfill their production and, and i think this this sits strategically nicely in that in that space okay we well, appreciate that update that's dr mike byron he's the president and ceo of nighthawk gold that's nhk on the venture exchange hey mike i appreciate that update I certainly look forward to tracking these results when you have them out for the market well it uh, sounds good to me rob and it was a pleasure speaking with you today